In today's video I will talk about ischiofemoral impingement on MRI. So ischiofemoral impingement is quite a special diagnosis because it's not so often recognized, especially not by clinicians, because the symptoms are very ambiguous, they have a insidious onset, you don't have like a typical cl typical clinical presentation and therefore we as radiologists can really help our colleagues out here. So first of all we, we need to know which region we are talking about. So we are talking about the space between the femur and the ischium tuberosity here. So we have the ischiofemoral space, the distance between the bony structures here, like the minimal distance between the lesser trochanter here and then the ischial tuberosity there. And sometimes you also hear the term quadratus femoris space, which is the space between the lesser trochanter here and the hamstring's origin here. Basically the quadratus femoris muscle here running through the quadratus femoris and also ischiofemoral space. So this muscle is quite important because any changes, edema, fluid collections around this level should raise our suspicion of ischiofemoral impingement. Now you can also nicely see on this image that we have the sciatic nerve here, just posteriorly to the quadratus femoris muscle, and then we have some tiny nerves at the anterior border of the nerve, uh, of the muscle here. And you can also understand if you have any kind of relevant irritation of this region we might get an affection of the surrounding nerves as well and especially if the sciatic nerve is affected patients might present with lumbar back pain or even some radiating pain down the legs so the presentation is very unclear frequently and we really should give any hip mri or pelvic mri a good look at this region so Certainly, um, you might already have seen uh, studies where they measured these distances and it's quite logic in a sense that the smaller the distance, the more likely we have a mechanical conflict between these two bones, the femur and the pelvic or pelvis bone here, the ischial tuberosity. So I'm not going to bother you too much, but you can see a nice example here of an ischiofemoral impingement patient on the left hand side where we have the distances of the ischiofemoral space and the quadratus femoris space much smaller than on the corresponding asymptomatic side. And this is statistically frequently significant. However, I'm not a big fan of measurements anyways, and you can see very narrow spaces here without symptoms, without edema, etc. So just keep that in mind. And um, I think there was a study in about 9% of so uh, there you can have findings like narrowing and even edema in the muscle in asymptomatic patients. So be mindful about that. So here we have a term sequence and any fat saturated fluid sensitive weighted sequence is quite okay to make this diagnosis. Unclear pain on the left side. And what we can see is first of all, the distance between the bony structures here on the left side is far smaller than on the not affected right side. So this is the case that I have shown you previously with all these measurements. And in addition to the narrowing, we can see we have some subtle edema in the quadratus femoris muscle. And in because we don't have any other explanation for the patient's symptoms and she had a fracture and a nail in the femur, this is just a post-surgical or post-traumatic change here after a long time after a severe uh, I think it was a femur fracture and therefore we have now secondary impingement here or a secondary conflict between these two bones and therefore consistent with issue of femoral impingement. So just a quick update on my Patreon campaign. The month of June was very successful and I'd like to welcome the following new patrons. Carlo, Santronios, Viraj and Hannes and also a very big thank to Adam who is my first fellow, my first private fellow if you will. Um, thanks Adam, thanks a lot for your support and to many more to come. So if you want to know more about Patreon and what exclusive content you get then go check my Patreon page and you, I'm pretty sure you will find very exciting stuff there. And with that let's move on. So here is just another case and this time we can see changes on both sides although the distance is not obviously small between these structures and what is interesting about this case is that if you have a long-standing issue of femoral impingement you might get changes and severe fatty atrophy of the quadratus femoris muscle as in this case here. So this is a T2 weighted sequence but you don't really see any 
muscle going through here on the left hand side whereas we still have some muscle fibers visible here on the right hand side and this is also well depicted here where you can see the quadratus femoris muscle how it's really nice nicely quadratic here with this striation which is normal but we don't see really any muscle left here due to a chronic conflict at this side here on the sagittal, which is also a nice sequence, this is the right hand side, you can see the quadratus femoris muscle. First of all, it's already small too, because we also have a chronic impingement at this level. And if we go to the, to the left side, we can see we don't see any muscle here anymore. So this is a, basically a complete atrophy of this muscle. And then here is a very obvious case where we can see, first of all, it's this side. The distance is very narrow, we have partial tears, extensive tearing of the hamstring origin, we have fluid collections in the ischiofemoral space or all around the quadratus femoris muscle and even edema here at the level of the conflict. So this is a very obvious um, case of ischiofemoral impingement, obviously with the corresponding symptoms here. What is nice about this case is that we have here a T1 fat set of the gadolinium administration and you can also see how these structures are enhancing and we have this pseudobursa forming here, just here, all this irritation of the soft tissue where we should have a smooth quadratus femoris muscle. So with this extent it's most likely a relevant finding and symptomatic. So here's the last case, very fit patient hardly any subcutaneous fat tissue as you can see here on this t1 and he has pr uh, increasing pain on the right side during activity and can't even go jogging anymore now also with night pain and we can see here immediately on our fat saturated images here with fluid sensitivity that we have extensive edema and fluid collections in and around the quadratus femoris muscle in the ischiofemoral and quadratus femoris space. So this is clearly an indication that this patient has a conflict there and is very consistent with a ischiofemoral impingement. We don't have any changes here on the contralateral side and the muscle here is quite okay but this one is very extensive. Uh, change here with a lot of irritation of the muscle etc. So a few things left for me to say. First of all, um, sorry Nazar, I forgot to mention you uh, in the Patreon segment. So thanks also to you Nazar for your support, of course. And then the next thing is I will probably change up uh, things a little bit in the future, at least for the next few months or weeks at least because um, I need to move house again because our landlord served us notice because she's getting divorced and need, they need to sell the house. Anyway, so I'm quite occupied with a lot of different stuff. Also the new company uh, needs a lot of attention. And also I got a new fellow, uh, Adam, who is my private fellow, who has um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one teaching and uh, I am expecting a second fellow in August. So I will have a little bit less time to make these videos and therefore I will switch to a different schedule from once, uh, one video on YouTube per week to maybe two per month or one per month. But I will do still frequent videos, um, at, I think one a week, therefore over on Patreon because I can produce the videos on Patreon much more quickly than I can for YouTube. So if you want to get still weekly videos, make sure you become a patron yourself. It starts with as little as $2 a month. And if you want a little bit more influence on the content, uh, maybe other perks, then go check the Patreon page and maybe there's a package for you as well. Yeah, that's it for this week. I hope you can understand the circumstances and as soon as I get more time available, with the move done, uh, at least by September and everything settled in a little bit, I might go back to the video schedule of one video a week. Um, thanks for your understanding and see you next time.